Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, today we're starting to do some work on the French garden and I'm sitting here pondering. I'm really not sure how to proceed. Let's start at the beginning. Okay, my image is from my little book I self-published oh, years and years and years ago. And in there, I did a bit of a drawing um, with my mum in mind when she's in the shed potting up her plants on the farm when I was a kid. Looks nothing like her. And I remember her saying, look at that woman's hair. That's crazy hair. That's nothing like me. So yeah, pretty much it's nothing like her. But it's just that image of being in the um, shed when we were potting up seedlings to plant out into the paddocks because I grew up on a vegetable farm. And often we would do for an additional income, pot up flowers and things like that. So when the veggies went to market, especially if there was leftover veggies, we'd go to local markets in the district and um, mum and I'd have some potted up flowers as well, just as a little bit extra income. There was always um, potting mix left over from when we were upgrading our seedlings and getting them bigger and stronger, ready to go out in the, the paddock. So... This was very much part of my memories of my childhood, the garden shed. Now, what I've done is I've uh, copied it from an A4 size to a 75% decrease and a 85% decrease. And I just can't decide which one and where. Now, if I just tilt the camera a little bit, you'll get a bit of better idea. So we've got this gap in the middle and we've got our um, scarecrow on the bottom. I'm just looking at the TV up on the wall just as I sort of think this through. One option is I leave the bigger one and I nestle it up here so that maybe the sign is just creeping up onto that plant a little bit. That still leaves me a bit of a gap through here that whether they're a prompt go in there or um, a floral something. It's just a bit tricky when you're hitting the top of this, this arch. Then the other suggestion is I have this bit of a gap over here. So I thought, well, maybe I reduce it and slide it sort of up into this space. But it's, um, maybe I cut a little bit more off of the white paper. It's just not 100% sure. At one point I had it right in the middle. And I sort of, I don't know. And then I was like, well, how many months have we got to go? So we're in February now. So the next one would be March. And there's two prompts. April, May, and then into June. So there's four months eight prompts left so I sort of thinking that maybe the smaller one is the better idea and then a comment that Rachel made in the last video which I don't know if I understood it correctly or I'm just reading into a general comment was that there was no major structures coming they were like elements to enhance elements to add so this potentially could be our last big structure so it could be things like a tree or I don't know. So do I reduce it in size and tuck it up here, running the risk of not having enough to fill? But that's not a risk because I can just floral it out. There's so much I can do in flowers and things like that. So that's a silly thought. Um... I know perspective is not really an issue when you're doing abstract work like this, but I do sort of feel like the house looks okay. She's tucked in over here, that's okay. And then at the very bottom, the very front, we've got these really big structures, which are sort of nearly the highlight of the piece and it's getting smaller as you go. So her tucked in over there to me feels a bit logical. Over here, I'm thinking it's probably a little bit big. Let's have a look at that. Don't know. 
The other things that I've got earmarked to go on this piece, sort of tending towards this, are these. Um, if you remember, I mentioned earlier in the video series that I had a block of the month that I've only completed a couple blocks on. And the project was designed by Libby Richardson. And each block was featuring, you know, all sorts of elements of um, vintage. Now, would you believe out of the blue, Mr. Facebook or whoever, Mr. Google listening, um, this popped up on my um, feed in Facebook. So I had a, quite a few people ask me, where did I get it and could I still get it? Well, who I bought it from no longer has it, I think. That's a um, Quilting Angels from Toowoomba. I bought the blue version. So let me bring that up to the screen. I bought that version. So that's the name of the quilt. And that's who is selling it on behalf of Libby at the moment. So Artsmart Craft Cottage. So that's the one I purchased, the blue but there's a red version. So if you were interested in tracking it down, um, go and check it out. See, there's my garden arch. And I've got in my hot little hands here, the beehive as a possibility for this piece. And there's the hanging baskets. Um, I'm sure the wheelbarrow is in here somewhere. I'm sure I got it from Libby's. Yes, I did. Anyway, I'm wasting time. I plan to use some of the other images. There, there's a wheelbarrow. I plan to use some of the other images um, in the Vintage Blend Studio project that Susanna's running. She's got some vintage sewing uh, equipment I think it's a prompt don't quote me on that coming up so I was hoping to do a sewing machine and things like that so some of those patterns will pop up again it's not a bad pattern to to buy whether you can buy it just as the designs which would be you know fantastic but I had to buy it as a block of the month, so you can imagine how much it costs, but the fabrics are beautiful and, you know, whatever. I'll end up doing heaps of things with it and it'll just be worth the investment. So, anyway, sidetrack. So if anyone is interested in Libby's pattern, or the block of the month at least, it is floating around. Um, now, back to this. What am I going to do? What if there's nothing big coming? I suppose I just fill it. I really, really love this corner where it's just a mishmash of elements. So I just don't think I'm going to need anything big. I'm going to, yeah, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do that one. And that still gives me plenty of space. You know, I don't know what the prompts are, but one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I've still got plenty of room. And my wheelbarrow and my beehive, I'm sort of thinking, need to come into it. And I'm wondering if the beehive tucks in here above the shoulder of the... Yeah, I'm going to cut that. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here because I end up just creating more work than I can possibly do within four or five videos. But we'll see how we go. Let's cut this beehive out. I think I sort of need to get some of these structures in place that I know I want to include. The other thing is that peacock. I haven't yet found a home for the peacock. Do I put, where do I put her, him? That's just a little pattern for the beehive itself. So I just wanna cut that out, sit it to one side. 
And here's a wheelbarrow. I haven't got a wheelbarrow in this piece. And I love the size of it. It's like quite, quite large. And there's all the little pattern pieces. So let's just pin that together. It's quite a challenge when we don't know where we're sort of heading with it. It's great fun. I know it probably seems a bit daunting to some of the newbies out there, but just go with it. It doesn't matter. When you're doing abstract work like this, it can pretty much do anything. And it won't matter because none of it makes sense, which is the great, great thing of it. Let me just move my little woolen pad there. Okay. Yeah, I think... I think we're going to do... All right, let me just get this camera zoomed in a little bit. I think you've got your general bearings. Cutting it down. Now, because I've got layers and layers and layers of fabric here, I can't trace it through with light sources or anything like that. But it doesn't really matter because I'm pretty confident I can come up with a collaged version of it. I'm going to try and tuck it right up there. Whether it'll look odd that I've got this piece underneath, I don't think so, but we'll see. All right, let's get started. And this, these two will either tuck in below, beside, somewhere. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this piece. I think she's going to be a combination of fabrics, embroideries. Let me turn my phone off. Um... Let's start with the shed. What can we make the shed out of? Let's see what fabric we've got in our box of tricks here. Oh, we haven't done anything with that piece yet either. Oh my goodness me. Maybe we can use that to connect the two. We're going to need a fabric for her dress. We're going to need a fabric for the structure. Do we? Uh, that's my... Oh, hello. Where am I at? Where did that stripe? Let's have a let's have a play with this. Oh goodness, how quickly the desk just gets out of control. What caught my eye is this this here. I wonder. I can cut that out of there. And we use this. Now this is a mass produced machine made um, table runner. Uh, I picked it up at um uh, for the ladies that are in southeast Queensland, a little country town called Howard, just off the side of the Bruce Highway, there is a drapery there, Van Kooten's, I think it is, or I think it's Van Kooten's. Unfortunately, the family patriarchs have since passed, and um, the business is now in the process of getting ready to go on the market. So it is like stepping back in time. You would go into that shop and there's just so much fabric. It is spectacular. So um, that's where I picked it up because they often have some random little... I should be able to fake that there. Random items in there other than fabric. And they had a fantastic range of table runners and things like that. Now I'm just going to fussy cut out this little guy to 
to get me access to that second stripe. And I'm liking this bit of a cross stitch feel happening to, with this prompt. <clears throat> yeah, so I did hear that the business is going on the market um, at the end of the financial year for us in Australia. That's uh, June 30. And there have been some fabric sales and things like that. I was up that way when there was a fabric sale on. I think it was up to 30% or something on. But I didn't dare go near it because you know what would happen. So it's best I just stay away. So I did. Everyone up there was like, Corinne, haven't you heard? There's a fabric sale on there. I'm like, yes, I've heard. I just don't need to go near it. <clears throat> and um, what was I going to say? The other... Oh, I've lost my train of thought. When you get into the little town... It's the gentleman that owned it and his wife, which I mentioned have since passed. They um, owned a few buildings in town, or they, the estate still owns a few buildings in town. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here and got my facts wrong. I do apologise if I have. But there was once, many, many, many years ago, a bakehouse. So just behind the general store is a second building that has this huge oven in it and it was the bakehouse for the town for the community and I went in there with the one of the shop workers because I'd been shopping up a storm and they said oh you need to see our second shop have you been in there and I'm like no so off we trottled across the road in behind the grocery store was this little cottage opened up those doors and oh my goodness it was chockets to the roof with even more fabric bolts of fabric heaps of it so uh, and I really didn't need any more so I was polite I I was appreciative of them taking me across so I picked out a few more pieces of fabric and added to my already abundant purchase and then I got out of there. <laughs> My husband's sitting in the car waiting for me and he sees me trotting across the road with the store worker. And he's like, where are you going? What are you doing? So I quickly said, oh, there's another building. I'm going for a little look. And he's just like, oh, my goodness. So anyway... The business now is on the market. So all my friends and rallies from that region are like, Corinne, you should buy it. You should buy it. Could you imagine? No, we don't want to imagine. I am not buying a fabric store. Oh, my goodness. You know what would happen is it would be so hard to do um, work, creative work, because you just get so caught up in the running of the business so, yeah, that's not going to happen. I remember many, many, many years ago when I was probably about 19, I had a part-time job in a craft shop near the PA hospital. I worked for a lovely lady. She was oh, so talented back in the days when folk art was big and she was really, really good at it. I think this will work. So I was like the little shop assistant and as my skills sort of developed, I was doing a few little classes and things like that. And oh, I loved it, absolutely loved it. But then she decided to um, go back nursing because she was actually a theatre nurse. So after a year or so, she decided to go back nursing and she closed the business. And um, yeah, I haven't heard or seen that lady for many 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 years gosh that's probably 35 year ago now love to know what she's up to I bet she's still painting she was so talented yeah I really like that now we're committed to this are we going to do it I think we are uh, I think we are okay let's cut One post. Let's 
second post. Let's get some pins into this situation. It's not exactly standing out. Does it matter? Because I'm going to make the inside of the shed the feature. I do love the red. Now I'm going to continue. I think this will be good. So where's this little post got to go? Doesn't have to be identical to the design, but it'll be pretty close. Why reinvent the wheel, I say? It'd be nice to include it in the project. Now, let's have a look at the top here. How did I do all this? We won't need all of that, will we? Because we've got the words garden shed let's just trim that so it's flush so I'm going to try and merge that is that even straight yep straightish I think once I get this structure in place, I'll sort of know where I'm heading. Is that straight? Yeah. I think I need to lift this post up a little bit. Just a little bit. That's better. I need to trim that. I think I was saying in the last video, which was the wave of colour garden, that that piece just didn't feel like it was getting a lot of love. I kept coming back to this one and this one just absorbed so much of my time. Well, I spent many hours on it yesterday. I still don't feel like I achieved much, but I did invest time into it. And I'm so pleased I did. It just feels like the piece finally got that little bit of love Just gonna trim that there. Will I trim it? Have I got enough to do the struts? Do I need to trim it? Probably don't. I'm gonna leave it. I think we've got enough to do some posts. I cut that in half. We can always trim it back. Find a gap between these X's. Hope it just doesn't unravel. Might just pop a little bit of glue on the back. Just in case. And we've got these are going to be the struts to hold it up the I don't know. They're not joists. We don't need to know what they're called. Goodness sakes. <laughs> Let's get our angles right. Yep. There we go. There's our roof. It still doesn't look quite right, does it?
probably overthinking it. Okay. Now, we need a sign. I'm just putting a pin back in my glue. We need a sign to go in there. Like a garden shed sign. We're going to make that out of See what's in our box of tricks. Maybe there's a bit of green. Yeah. How big of a sign do we need? Decent size. That might be painful to stitch because it's like a, a felt, but it's like an upholsterer's. Suede. Yep. That works for me. Let's just pin that for now there. And we'll see. That might be just too much effort to push my needle through that. But we'll give it a go. I like the pop of colour there. Ow. Just got to get a couple pins in here. There we go. Yep, happy with that. Now, there's our design. Our little girl. And let's grab a pen and see if we can sort of sketch her in. Where's the pen? Okay, so, gosh, let's, let's get her dress in first, I think, because that's sort of going to set the heights. Seems like a million years since I... Did this project. So we've got the chance to make that a piece of fabric. And she's got her little face. And she's got a crazy bandana -y thing on her head with her curls, her hair coming out. Oh, she's a crazy girl, this one. A couple little eyes and a little heart-shaped mouth. Okay, she doesn't even have ears. <laughs> Does she need ears? No, she doesn't need ears. All right, let's, let's get this table in play. I think I might draw a line. concentrating can you hear it all right so just sort of building up some structures to form legs and then down we come with a couple lines a little bit skew whip but doesn't matter once we get the stitches into position we can fix any crooked lines. All right. Now there's a pot on her bench. Sitting on a tray, probably sketching too much because I might use fabric yet. Or not, I don't know, a little hand comes down some buttons on her little dress a little design there I think we could do something with the hem 
And then there's these accessories over here. We've got like a pile. What I was thinking over here, we've got balancing, balancing pots, a bit of craziness, a bit of fun, give or take a bit, they really, and then there was even a plant hanging out, one of them, a bit of silliness. There's a little bee and a little butterfly, anyway, it doesn't really matter about all that. And then I had these plants, the flowers sort of weaving around as well. So we can certainly do some embroidery, which is a, a given, isn't it, these days? Knows what we'll do in those parts. It'll be a combination of fabrics and bits and pieces. Okay, there's a watering can. go she's got a pocket <clears throat> I guess before I get too far ahead of myself are we going to use fabric in there to decorate her little dress what have we got in here I think those prints are probably a little bit big to be honest hmm That one's not bad. That's a smaller. There would be other colours in the range of that fabric. Um, do we want another colour? Probably not. Probably would be just blues and pop a little dress in there. How are we going to do this? The dress is a lot bigger now. Gosh, she's put on weight. Look at that. <laughs> she's plump. Look, this was my mum. She was a skinny little binny, and this was probably more like me. I've blossomed since going to the big smoke and leaving the farm. I might just do a bit of a rough cut. Um, how am I going to do this? No, I don't want to do a rough cut. I've got any tracing paper. Yeah, I do. Let's get a bit of a shape. Let's think this through a little. I might have to make her a little skinnier. I'm starting to feel soft. Conscious. <laughs> Let's cut this out. We'll have a play with her dress. I'm not convinced that I'll do a dress, but I do like the idea of putting some lace at the bottom of her dress. That makes sense. So let's. Let's. This out. Let's cut it from where we can spare a corner instead of starting a new new area. I 
Oh, how quickly our space gets messy when we start doing these things. Got a bit of a space here. I'm wondering if that cross stitch flower might nestle up there. <clears throat> All right, one little dress. Let's see if we give her a dress. Um, I do like it. But then we've got to make the pot pop. It's more and more complicated, doesn't it? What could we use for the pot? I think once the desk or the bench and the pot come into play, it'll push the dress back a little bit. Just mucking around here, creating a pot, <clears throat> which doesn't even look like it's a pot. I thought if I folded it in half, I'd get a similar shape either side, but no. I will now. The pot's too big. I don't know where I'm heading with this. You know the pot you mix your soil in? That's the pot. I still think it's a little bit big. But you sort of need, it's a fairly big, big pot and then you decant out. Decant out your soil into smaller pots as you're working with your little seedlings. And there we go. I'll just put it a little bit off center. So it's not so. And then her arms would come down and then would stitch on it and make it look all pretty. Then the table would come across in front of her, which would probably use a nice chocolate tone. Where's my threads? So we'd have to just picture chocolate bench couch in those five strands at least to get that bench I think that'll work I'm liking that yeah then I can start playing with the flowers and yeah happy with that there's a bit of a plan who knows how it'll evolve but that's at least a start now I'm just going to pin the big pot down which will catch her dress the other thing I wanted to do is I'll go hunting for a really fine edged crocheted lace to go on the bottom of her skirt can't see anything at a glance but what I'll do is I'll stitch all this down and just leave that loose so that I can go hunting. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look at this top corner. I sort of feel like I want to finish in here at the same time. So... will all work with a little bit of jiggling to make sure it all lines up and looks good now this is the flower that came out <clears throat> let's just fussy cut this down a little 
because I think it will work up the top there. It's a nice take on the roses that have put, been popping up everywhere through the whole piece. It's got a bit of a, a rose feeling about it. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> Drank my coffee really quickly. So it's given me a funny throat. Okay. Nearly got it. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, let's bring it down a little bit. I'm thinking I can work it in up here. Yeah. bud there's a bud I think it's got to go that way <coughs> yep I like that so that's going to be patched in up there and that'll help connect the areas break up the lines a little bit Gosh, there's so much stitching that can happen on this. There's, oh, goodness me. If I get this piece finished by the end of this project, I will be stunned because there's just, you could just keep going and going. It's going to be so much fun. Okay, <clears throat> I think we've nestled in our little lady. Yep, I'm happy with that. Now, this other rose... I'm going to fussy cut it out and just have a little fiddle with it. I love the background colour. So the garden fence or the arbour was using this background and I love how it's just subtly there. And it blends really well with the overall background. Couldn't have picked that better if I tried. So sort of wondering if I can use this to frame, frame it out a little bit. Let's just see what happens with this. And how we can merge it, if at all. But I'm thinking we can. So I don't want it to come down and meet the pumpkin. And his nibs here. 
do I take it more? That way, that feels a bit better. Do I bring it down? That's well, not bad. It's not encroaching on his head. It's just not totally covered. This has a bit of space. Then this comes up out of the top of it. And I still have this little space through here that could be something connecting. I'm going to pin it in place. <clears throat> I wonder if I, if I cut that in there a little bit more. This is about the only spot that I sort of don't feel like it's looking quite right. I might just thin that out a little bit. might feel a little bit more dainty then. Sometimes it's just the smallest amount of fabric needs to be taken out. And it, it starts working. That's better. Now I can see the curve there. That gives room for a feet. The plants will come out of there. Oh yeah, I'm liking this now. Ow, there's a pin. So it'll be just a case of invisible stitching around all that. Might just nibble a little bit out of there to make it feel a little finer and not so bulky. That's better. It's sort of connecting it all together a little. <clears throat> I still got plenty of room. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, goodness me. How are we going for time? Oh, plenty. And I'm wondering if I can bring a doily in over here just to soften those edges. Yeah, I like that. Just to make it feel like it's meant to have those elements. Is there another one that can come maybe through? Here, just to give us a little bit of layered effect, like so. Yep, I like that. So I feel like I could do something there. What have we got? Might be one of these these tones just to connect a little I don't know what I'm trying to do just make it interesting break that big red line a little so it's not so structured maybe a little one There, yeah, I like that. I might even, I can continue working that side, bringing down some patches, which we started. Oh gosh, I need a bigger table. Let me get some things out of the way. If I could bring then some patches of fabric it's going to fall off. Sorry, guys, bumping the camera. See the patches that are up the top corner there? If I can start bringing that down as well, it's sort of going to have a bit of a patchy border. Nothing real logical, just patches. If that makes sense. 
that can continue down that side. You sort of got this floral interior with these, like someone's repaired this piece of fabric around the outside is sort of what I'm going for. Well, that's my story anyway. I think that will work. Yeah, I think that will work. That connects well up into that region. That makes sense. Some patches, stitch my little girl, and then that connects down into the pumpkin scene, down into that bottom corner with the rabbit. Yeah, that works. I think my proportions are reasonably okay, actually, because he's in the foreground. Yeah. She's sort of halfway up the hill, and then the house is further along. So... I, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's come together. So I've got some stitching to do now. Visible stitch it down. I'll probably keep her embroidery very um, simple colours. I don't think I'll get too silly in here. I will with the flowers because, you know, they're flowers. But, um, yeah. Just before I go, I just want to place around these pieces. Maybe there's an opportunity to start thinking about some of these. I don't know. I just shoved it over that side. Hmm. I know they'll happen, where they'll happen, who knows. Let's just let's just not put the the horse in front of the cart and get this too far ahead of myself. Get this stitch down. This is this is brilliant. I'm, I love it. And I can creep flowers in there to frame the next thing out. Like I'm going to leave this edge quite open, but we can conclude the side of the piece. Yeah, I think that I do feel like I could nestle in a this piece. What would I put here? Do I bring Do I bring more of the flowers from the top near the house? Do I continue this? I have another another piece of this. Um, I'm going to fussy cut this out and just have it ready because I think it's definitely going to be included, but like the connecting element between the next scene. Just thinking outside my brain here a little. I don't know if I'd want to break it down because the sewing machine has changed colours and stitched straight into the next section. So I need to be a little bit careful, but I don't know where the peacock's going to go. You know, I just can't seem to bring myself to use him yet. I, I don't know why. Maybe he's destined for another piece. I sort of feel like he could be a feature on his own in um, one of the pages within the Journal of Stitchery that I've got spare. Just not sure. It's just something stopping me working him in at the moment. So I'm just going to go with my gut feeling. At the moment. Depends what the next prompts are. If the next prompts are, are small or aerial type prompts. Things in the air. Well then maybe the peacock can anchor something. Don't know. Isn't it fun? Drives you nuts but it's fun.
Okay. Let's. It does, it does pull the pieces together somewhat. It tucks right down, especially if that came up and over, or that one came up and over. You would think that they're all together. Oh, I do like that. I sort of feel like I've encapsulated, if that's a word, this little guy down here, this fellow, that guy. And it blends well over here with the Yeah, it blends well with the um, arbor. Tucks in nicely there. Just may need to sneak that way a little bit. Now, where's my pins gone? just needs shaping a little bit because it looks so square it's not natural looking as if a, a rosebud is sneaking over his shoulder I just need to shape that in there and that in there that's better it's not encroaching, but it's encroaching, if that makes sense. I'm going to pinch a little bit out of here so I can see the crochet doily more. Just a case of fiddling around until you feel like it blends. good there's a pussycat bellowing going for a drizzly rainy day today perfect stitching weather and I have no appointments. No one needs me anywhere or to be anywhere. And it just feels refreshing. Where'd my pin go? So I was so looking forward to today so that I could work out this piece because it's been rattling around in my head all week as I've tried to get to it. And, um, and now I have a plan. I really feel like I could nestle, nestle that in there, you know. It's a big beehive. Where was the little template? If that went in there like so, and then the structure. Oh, yeah. Then what do I do there? Anyway, I'm going to stop at that because I'm going to get ahead of myself. I know that beehive's going in and I really would like the wheelbarrow to go in. 
I love how that like, looks like boards. She's done a pretty, pretty little job of that. Okay, that's enough work. For goodness sakes, Corinne, stop at that. You are creating more than you are doing. All right, I like how those roses drift down there and corner off that piece. They work with the arbor. Then it comes up and we catch our little girl. She's tucked in there. That's really, really good. Happy with that. Everything's wriggling. I need to get some stitches in. And then it connects to this the rose at the top. I can bring some patches in. Oh, plenty, plenty of work. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me and um, watching me pull this next section of this piece together. Yeah, really happy with that. Looking up at the TV screen and just making sure that everything's connected. I do have a bit of a space here, but I don't think that's too much of a problem. I could probably bring the sign down a fraction, but a bit of air is not a bad thing. Do need to find something for her skirt. Probably won't even notice that it's there. What's that there? Nothing yet. All right, guys. I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.